Peter Abdul Rahman Kasig is the latest in a string of Western hostages to be executed by ISIS. The jihadist group announced his death with characteristically grisly theatre in a video fronted by its mouthpiece and lead executioner, Jihadi John. But few people knew the former soldier's death also marked the failure of an extraordinary covert operation to secure his release. A series of emails obtained by The Guardian has revealed an attempt by a famous New York lawyer to save Peter Kasich's life, seeking the help of FBI counter-terrorism officials, Al-Qaeda and ISIS's spiritual elite. In early October 2014, Stanley Cohen received two phone calls. The first was from Palestinians who had worked with Abdul Rahman Kasig, an aid worker and devout Muslim convert, in Lebanon. The second came within a week, from photojournalist John Penley. Both asked Cohen for his help to save Kasig's life. Cohen accepted. The terror group Hamas. How long did you represent them? You mean the democratically elected Hamas government? Well known for his controversial defense of terror suspects, notably Osama bin Laden's son-in-law, Abu Haith, Cohen had solid connections in the world of jihad. His first step was to approach a former Guantanamo detainee linked to Al-Qaeda. Their response was unconditional. We would like to save him. That Al-Qaeda, architects of 9-11, would want to save an American life is not as surprising as it might seem. ISIS emerged out of what was Al-Qaeda in Iraq. But in the chaos of the Syrian civil war, Al-Qaeda and its affiliate, the Al-Nusra Front, found themselves competing with ISIS for a power base. Once brothers in arms, this competition degenerated into a deep animosity. On October 13th, Cohen flew to Kuwait to meet a group of Al-Qaeda veterans whom he'd codenamed the Food Group. The only way Kasich would be released, they advised, was in a deal negotiated by Salafist sheikhs, the scholastic heads of the jihadist movement. Cohen also contacted an assistant attorney general and the FBI, seeking support for his mission. Cohen asked the FBI to sanction his approach to Sheikh Abu Muhammad al-Maqdisi in Jordan, al-Qaeda's spiritual leader. Only someone with Maqdisi's standing could bend the ear of his ISIS counterpart, ideologue Turki bin Ali. October 23rd, email. FBI contact to Cohen. Was just told by my co-worker in the country, your call is a go. Magdasi agreed to help Cohen. The Sheikh initiated a dialogue with Bin Ali, a negotiation based on three pillars. One, Magdasi would stop all public criticism of ISIS. Two, ISIS in return would abandon its tactic of kidnapping and executing Western journalists and aid workers. And three, as a gesture of good faith, ISIS would release Peter Kasig. October 25th, there is support among both the religious heavyweights and some of the important guys on the ground. Cohen boarded a flight from Jordan to Kuwait, bearing good news for his Al-Qaeda contacts. The sheikhs were on track to make a deal. But within a few hours of Cohen's flight leaving Amman, Jordanian security forces arrested Magdasi on internet terrorism charges. Cohen claimed to have been blindsided by the arrest, but Al-Qaeda's trust in him evaporated. The talks collapsed, and with his key advocate now in prison, Kasich's life was back on the line. October 30th. Plug's been pulled for now on talks. People more than a bit spooked and feeling betrayed. Cohen returned to New York deflated. Kasich's execution had been delayed, but he told the FBI hopes for his release had dissolved with Magdasi's arrest. Anger at this betrayal, 
burned any inclination among the sheikhs to cooperate. On November 16th, the worst happened. November 16th, oh my God, just woke up to see your message. I have reached out. The video announcing Kasig's execution was released. A while ago, we were informed that our beloved son, Abdul Rahman, no longer walks this earth. In 26 years, he has witnessed and experienced firsthand more of the harsh realities of life than most of us can imagine. Stanley Cohen, in yet another strange twist to this tale, will be imprisoned in January on tax evasion charges. Sheikh Magdisi remains in prison in Jordan. The question of what might have been if Cohen's deal had succeeded still hangs unanswered. <laughs>